just give us an idea at this time, how much have you increased the production of your ventilators and where is it around the world that people are coming to you saying, please, we need more? Yes, so we make tens of thousands of ventilators in the last 12 months and we've been increasing our production of those ventilators by... 2x, 3x and beyond. And on the mask side, the tubing and masks that are needed for the patients that come through with COVID-19, we're e increasing by tenfold the production for those masks. We've been involved in this COVID crisis throughout Asia. We were there in China, in Wuhan, in Hubei province, right at the start, 90 days ago, we did double and triple our production in our China plant. We've been doing the same for our Singapore plant across Asia. And now, as the contagion comes to Western Europe, particularly Italy, but now the UK, France and Germany, we're ramping our production up for Europe. And in parallel, the United States has been hit. And so all of us on the ventilator manufacturing side are doing double, triple time to make sure that we have a ventilator at the bedside table. What are the limiting factors, though, in scaling up production on that scale? You know, it's interesting. ResMed, we're the number one provider of CPAP equipment in the world. We made more than 14 million masks and more than 2.5 million flow generators last year in that area. So we have immense scale. We made tens of thousands of ventilators last year. So final production is not the limiting factor. The limiting factor comes down to some parts and some components as our whole supply chain now has to double and triple their production of parts to feed into ResMed and, and our competitors as we all try to ramp up for this need. So it's really a supply chain problem. We're on it, uh, but there's a lot of work that's been going on the last 90 days. Uh, but right at the moment, we think between us and our competitors, we should be able to take care of patients in need in hospitals throughout Europe and the United States and the rest of the world, as long as people follow the social distancing, the quarantining and the controls that governments and health authorities are trying to put in place. I mean, that's a, a brilliant claim to say you think that yourself and competitors will be able to meet the demands. Financially, how is that working? Because it must be, I'm sure, far more expensive to ramp up the production. So how are you managing that? Yeah, it's very difficult. We actually have a global humanitarian ethical model that looks at the flow of patients to say, where can we send devices? And so it's not based so much on uh, the revenue or any profit, just enough cash flow to make sure that we can keep going. But costs are going up for us. Supply chain costs, air freight costs. You think of consumer travel being down double digits. Uh, that increases the cost of air freight for components like ours. So all the costs are going up. What we're trying to do is hold pricing steady and just include some surcharges for the, for the crazy costs that are coming in for air freight components and others so that we can provide these products. This is a global emergency and companies like us just have to step up and make it happen and get the ventilators and get the masks there. I also want to recognise, Rosie, the frontline heroes here are these respiratory therapists, these respiratory nurses, pneumologists, other pulmonary doctors and critical care medicine physicians and nurses. A ventilator doesn't run itself. We need these frontline heroes to do this for us. And it's a great partnership between us, the manufacturers, and those frontline heroes. And we should be able to get through this crisis.